from the studios of Barcelona, Spain. It's Slade Suter, live on Authenticity Radio. Slade Suter, live on Authenticity Radio. It's a radio show about real people and real authentic talk. And now your host, who has the hospitality of a fat and jolly innkeeper, Slade Suter. Thank you and welcome. This is Slade Suter broadcasting live from Barcelona, Spain. Today, we are going to talk about a foundation able to bear the weight of life. And who is going to present these pillars of life? My friend, Cal Malik, will be presenting the pillars of consciousness. That's some name, isn't it? Well, it is. <laughs> and here he is, Cal. Welcome. Hi. Thank. It's nice to be back. Okay, Cal. The three pillars of consciousness, and you're going to start with pillar number one, which is freedom, and then the pillar. The next program will be empowerment, and the final pillar will be creation. Okay, so it's important for our listeners to understand that you are going to present the pillars uh, one at a time. However, they need to integrate and work with all three pillars at the same time. Freedom. We hear a lot about it in today's life and all over the news. It's interesting to sort of start off with, I guess, on a on a personal level to say, well, okay, freedom's an interesting word, but what is it that I want to be free from? That's a good question. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, well, my life seems to be fine. What do I need to be, what, what do I need to be free of? And the kind of answer is, is, is on multiple levels. And one level, for instance, is freedom from our habits. Okay, so we, we go through life and we learn things and we repeat things and then they become habits. And um, we, we have no sort of conscious influence on these habits a lot of the time. So we kind of do things and we think, why, why did I do that? And freedom from these habits, or at least cr- having a choice to choose which habits you want and which ones you don't want, and to create new ones as well, is an important aspect of freedom. Okay, so you're saying that habits are not necessarily bad. You're just saying that habits can be categorized as good and bad. Absolutely. Or, or, or healthy or unhealthy, rather. Absolutely. And in fact, if you, if, you, if, if you actually sit for a few moments and think about it, we would never, the human species would never get anywhere at all without habits. In fact, any species, if it didn't have the ability to create habits, would not get anywhere in life at all. In the morning, you'd get up and go, well, how do I tie my shoelace? Right. And so that, OK, now I've got that. Well, how do I put on my shoe in the first place? Because all of these things you do by habit. And you're driving a car. Ninety percent of driving a car is habitual. If you if you drove the car the same way that you kind of drove it when you were first learning how to drive a car, okay, you would not be able to do anything else. You would be telling the person behind you to keep quiet, switch the radio off, because I have to focus on all these movements. So yeah, so so habits is 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 one area where it's almost well much of our behavior in terms of the things that we kind of don't like about what we do and how the situations that we get in into um, have arisen due to habits i had a client the other day who um, would say that when i go when i go home me and my wife we get into this kind of arguments and and sort of fighting and that kind of thing on a on a habitual level you know is kind of on a daily occurrence so, so habits in that area as well is something that we want to be free from and the freedom isn't to be free from the habits it's to freedom to choose which habits mm. we can have or we want and, we, and, and that we desire and which ones we don't and to be able to choose to get rid of those so repetitive patterns that are showing up in your life to first of all recognize them so would it be helpful for our listeners to to grab their notepad and to list some of their repetitive patterns or habits 
Well, here's here's a good way to do it, and it's it's a little bit frightening as well because one of the one of the kind of requirements of um, freedom, if you like, in terms of this path, is courage. So, um, in terms of habits, is to say, okay, I'm going to take a day of my life, say like last Wednesday or something, and recall the everything that you did from waking up in the morning to going to sleep at night and kind of write it down for say half hour period so i was at work and i at lunch and i went home and this happened and so on and so on and do that for three or four days <clears throat> and you'll realize that you know it's it, continuously it's the same so the patterns will show up and those you can safely say that i do have a habit in sitting down and having a coffee turning on the television and melting out of existence for about a half an hour. That would, uh-huh. be, a, that would be a repeating habit. Perhaps three or four hours. Because <laughs> 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 what you really want to identify in terms of habits is the triggers for the habits. Okay, so um, those are the key parts of habits is like what triggers it. When I go home, my kind of partner says the following or does the following, then I do the following and we get into this little bit of a tennis match. Okay, but what was the triggering point? You know, was it actually literally when, what you got, when you got home, is that the trigger or was it when this event happened or that event happened? So the, the kind of key around habits is triggers. The trigger actually starts off a reaction pattern. It start, I start that's, to react to something external from me. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. a, that's a trigger. So first, identify the habits and then identify yeah. the triggers. The triggers. Yeah. Okay. And as a kind of step back exercise with this as well, which is another area where it starts to get a bit frightening, is to go back in time six months to a sim- to like a Tuesday six months ago and and write and sort of recall what you were doing at that time and go back two years ago five years ago and ten years ago and then you realize oh my god for the last ten years all i've been doing is these activities jeez yeah and that's that's kind of where it really gets to be a bit frightening yeah it would be helpful for our listeners to back off emotionally from emotional response and just be, and just be curious and, and say, okay, I want to better myself. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm going to be as honest as I can. I'm yeah. going to have a courageous uh, standpoint as I do it. So I'm going to start reviewing my life in a very curious and non-judgmental way. Absolutely, and that is the that is a definitely a key uh, for freedom as well is is being non-judgmental. Okay, and it's non-judgmental of yourself and non-judgmental of others as well, which we'll probably come across later on. But certainly, the we one of the kind of fundamentals of healing as well, if you like, is like to not beat ourselves up about stuff. Okay, and it's I think that a lot most healing, but certainly like from the area of self-help where healing comes from that category the the first prime concern is like not to beat yourself up about stuff oh but it's so easy to do it is i I, i'm so used to it Uh uh-huh you know and matter of fact don't take that away from me no 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 but we're experts at it as well i'm comfortable that's the the problem is we know ourselves so well we know exactly where the scars are right and where to go (laughs) and pick them and and and, and what kind of salt to rub into them right You're pretty morbid, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, it's it's true. You know, they say like it, it, it's no good like um, beating somebody else down about something. They'll just go away and beat themselves up about it even better than you can do. Oh yes, yeah. So that is one of the areas where we are true experts, and it's always it's always interesting when people when we talk about like enlightenment in terms of self awareness or self understanding, and I'm saying we we are experts at that. Mm-hmm. So, so self-destruction. Yeah, that is um, that is. It, it's a general overall key, really. We should we should stop um, beating ourselves up about stuff. You know, if you feel that you've done something wrong, then okay, you did something wrong. Like that's fine, and try and learn some lessons from it. But you know, to to go around in a spiral and get deeper and deeper into that doesn't serve anybody. Certainly not yourself. So we have to be non-judgmental about this. 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, boy, so, well, you're starting out with a bang. This pillar, <laughs> this, this pillar of freedom is is hard so far. Well, it's it's it, challenging. It's, it is and the thing is 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 one that we what's happen what happens is as we grow up and and live with our families and societies and so on this uh, the freedom that we had uh, when we were a child has slowly been it's not been eroded it's been con- covered up or contained and as we go through life it, we get more and more covers so much so that we've almost forgotten that underneath all of those covers there is this bright light that shines so you're okay. inferring that when we were children we had this intact this pillar was Absolutely. already there and we yes. did something to cover this pillar up absolutely absolutely have you, have you ever this is really sort of it gets a bit crazy because you get you see parents and they say to their children don't be childish and you think well it's a child so he's going to be childish um, but the child at that time before the, the parent might say something like that had the freedom to do and now slowly like coming into adulthood has encroached on that freedom and now if you go if you go into a park and you're I don't know a 40 year adult dressed in a suit and you st- and you want to climb up a tree just consider all of the kind of thoughts that go through your head that will stop you from doing that Oh my goodness! What will they think of me? Exactly. So, so the child never had that issue. Okay, so so the the adult could no longer comfortably arrive to where that child is coming from. That spontaneous uh, freedom. Don't Absolutely. be childish. Absolutely, yeah. And so, but from the, from like examples like that, you can see that as we um, the. the the further back in time we go towards our childhood, the more freedom that we we had. And as people sort of, uh, as society, uh, our parents, the groups that we interact with, as they slowly sort of to covered up that freedom by saying, "Oh, that's childish. You can't do that. Oh, that's that's stupid. That's stupid. Don't do that," and so on and so on. Over the years, now we're so limited that you could, you know, write a. A kind of activity log of yourself, and, and and which you know was the exercise before, and you find that you don't really do much that's different anymore. Boy, okay, okay, I'm following you. It seems like there's a there's a protection mechanism to keep us from looking at our repeating patterns in life. So how do we get around this? Well, the the kind of thing behind those. That, that feeling if you like because although from from because we've been looking at it from the fear aspect if you like or from the kind of it's bad quotes aspect of it but from the other side there are certain things that we get from being like who we are and and we get things like security we get stability we get safety or feelings of these anyway whether they actually exist or not is a question but we do get feelings of these, so we get feelings of stability, security, you know, we get feelings of inclusion. So all of these, and these are primal, uh, you know, in terms of energy, the root chakra energy, um, emotions, and sort of beliefs, these are the primal ones, okay? So that's why when a trauma in life hits us, like, you know, for, uh, if we might lose our, our job, or you know we might separate from a partner or some illness might come into our lives and it shakes those foundations and because we've never considered um, what other foundations are around us then we suffer in that trauma because our our, we... our primal security is is at risk yeah our, our security our our safety exactly but if you've if you spent time considering this and you kind of understand that there are other foundations around that you can pick, and you can have the freedom, the choice to be able to pick those, then those traumas won't hit you that heavily because you can just, you know, if the if the if the if the bit of rock that you're standing on starts to shake, you can see that there are other rocks around you and jump to a one that is more stable. I don't know if that's allowed on the air. Uh, you just said a, a <laughs> six-letter word that started with a C. See. You didn't say the choice word, did you? Choice. <laughs> that choice. Oh my gosh. 
I said it again. Oh, yeah, choice. I'm gonna get my license revoked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, had, well, this choice is very interesting. Okay, yes. so freedom and choice. 